Hello, everyone, and welcome back into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I'm Davis Maddock, joined this week by George Kurtz, our friend Craig Mish, normally here with us, out on location at the All Star Game. He got treated to another American League victory last night. Uh, got to see a couple home runs, George. But uh, you know, today is is generally speaking one of the uh, deadest days in at least the American sports calendar. No golf going on uh none of the major american leagues are playing right now uh don't think we're gonna have the kevin durant trade happen today although what a day it would be to have the kevin durant trade the nba would pretty much dominate the headlines for 24 hours how is it uh, how's it going out there on long island maybe the Deshaun watson you have Deshaun watson would be uh uh, suspended oh, today will be big news as well, but we can get through that as well. But you're right, it's a tough day. It's a tough day without anything, uh, any news, any news going on today. No games today. I, I hate the All-Star Game only for this reason. Three days are really one game. I'm not, and I'm not even a big fan of the All-Star Game anymore. So I uh, just got to get through today. I'm counting down till tomorrow. Yankees have a doubleheader. Yep, the Yankees have a doubleheader tomorrow. We're going to have baseball back. Really feels like the Futures game should be today, right? Really, really feels Absolutely. like instead of having it uh, – Having it done when there are games taking place feels like it would have been a good day for the Futures game to take place. Getting into Wednesday's headlines, uh, Giancarlo Stan and Byron Buxton both hit home runs as the American League win the All-Star game yet again. Uh, most annoying thing for me that took place during this game, Shohei Otani. Basically, uh, one of the three guys that any casual fan would be tuning in to see gets picked off at first base. I mean, come on. Come on, Kershaw. Let's let's let the guys steal a base. Let's let's have some fun out here. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski reported that there have been felony domestic violence charges filed against free agent forward Miles Bridges. Uh, reading the article on ESPN sounds pretty bad. Uh, does not sound like a situation that it's going to lead to Miles Bridges playing basketball anytime soon. Uh, and uh, you know, of course, thoughts go to his family because it, it really sounds like a disturbing situation. Uh, it was reported yesterday that Jacob deGrom had his simulated game that was supposed to go, uh, I believe, yesterday or today. It's been pushed back to Thursday because he is dealing with some mild muscle soreness. Uh, this is more old Mets, George, than new Mets, right? This is we, we associate this with the hapless Mets of the 2000s and the 2010s where they just can't get healthy. Interesting to see what happens there. And uh, an interesting story, Jimmy Garoppolo expected to be cleared by mid-August. It's been reported that basically the team just kind of told him to go home. We don't want you. We don't need you. Trey Lance is our guy. Uh, and, you know, we all have our opinions about that. And it feels like a lot of the 49ers players have their opinions about that. But uh, let's, let's just lead off with this. Where do you see Jimmy Garoppolo playing in 2022? You know, it's not going to be easy, Davis, because you know, we're in late July now. I mean, every team has their quarterback. Will they trade him within the division? You know, that's the only thing that makes sense is Seattle. You know, the only thing that really doesn't have a quarterback now would be the Seattle Seahawks. Does it make sense for them to trade him within the division? Uh, it depends on what Seattle would give up. Well, I'm, how about this? Would they trade up to Seattle for a, a blah return? And that's another thing. They're not going to get a big return from anybody, but maybe they get a little bit more from Seattle, but we're not talking a first, second, probably not even a third round pick at this point because Seattle just waited out. They're going to have to release him sooner or later if they sent them home. It means they don't want them around uh, Trey Lance. They think it's going to hurt Lance's development here. You know, so they don't want him around because they have to dump him either way. It's Mayfield all over again, right? It's just, sooner or later, they're going to have to give away for a song and a dance. So uh, my guess would be Seattle, assuming, you know, I said we're at July 20th. Camps are starting to open up this week now. If a quarterback goes down, that's a completely different story here. And I guess they could play that waiting game. But then again, when was the last time we saw a quarterback go down in training camp? You know, we're talking about Kurt Warner back 20 years ago. That's about all I can think of. Yeah, I, that actually I hadn't I hadn't thought about that. But you're right. I mean, generally the injuries that we are going to see in training camp are going to be running backs, wide receivers. They do they they baby these quarterbacks, right? They wear the no contact jersey. It's not like uh, I guess you know probably Lamar and Jalen Hurts and stuff. They're out there running, but it's not like they're not doing their full 
cadre of cutting drills and agility drills because every every franchise, right? Every team knows the number one priority has got to be guys staying healthy. Uh, the news with Jacob Degrom getting his simulated start pushback. I mean, yeah, uh, Mets fans have really been counting on this. The one-two punch of Degrom and Scherzer. I mean, does does it feel like this is going to kind of be a lost season for Degrom, or do you think he's going to be able to to battle through this? Well, they they're calling it an abundance of caution. Which good for them if if that's what it is, right? He uh, said he had some soreness in his shoulder. Uh, I felt it on Sunday, so they're pushing it back to Thursday. Listen, he pitches tomorrow. He gets through it. Everything's okay. Not a big deal, you know. But it, it does mean the Mets might want to take it a little slower, you know. I think they were originally targeting Degrom to come back uh, versus the Yankees later this month. They're playing. Uh, they start the Subway Series. Uh, they were like, well, we're targeting to get him in one of those games, which probably was silly anyway. I don't think you want the ground coming back in a big series like that in New York, where it's going to be pumped up, maybe do some extra damage he normally wouldn't do. Put him in a more low, low leverage game here. So this probably backs up to the first week of August. Once again, not a big deal, assuming just a little soreness and he'll be okay. But yeah, you know Mets fans and Mets Twitter is going bananas over this. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, we got a jam-packed show for you. We're going to, of course, continue our fantasy football chatter as long as Craig is out of the office. we got more buy-low candidates coming up for you. Dubs is going to join me to talk about the 3M Open. We might get a little bit into the European Tour as well. Fantasy reality, don't go anywhere. Stay with us for the next hour. Stay on the grid. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And them. God being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we have to go to San Jose, too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The early line. But overall, I mean, this is as good a performance as you're going to find in professional sports. When you talk about, like, the dunk competition, this is by far better than the dunk competition at this point. These guys are getting after it and enjoying themselves. They they definitely are. I'm not sure if there really is any all-star side event that stacks up right now to the home yeah. run derby. It's it's In a way, it's, it's simplicity is what gets the job done. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. What he has done, Scott, is just, it's old school, man. I mean, a guy that when he throws, if I'm a relief pitcher, I'm like, all right, I got the night off, I guess, because he's not going to let me come into the game. Uh, he's just going to basically tell Magley, like, sit your ass down in the dugout. I'm going to finish this game because I can't trust the bullpen. The guy is eight, nine innings, 100, 105, 110, 115. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. For right now, Matt Carpenter, if you had the uh, the fortitude to pick him up off the waivers, what an unbelievable beginning to the season he is having for the New York Yankees. Batting 350, 13 home runs. I mean, this guy could not record a hit, George, for the rest of the season. You could drop him. He could get hurt. It doesn't matter. He has already boosted you so far up the standings. The Sports Grid Network. 
everyone and welcome back into fantasy sports today here on sports grid tv i'm davis maddock joined by george kurtz and as rookies are reporting to nfl training camps we are uh 15 days away from the hall of fame game we are 50 days away from the beginning of the nfl regular season it's time to start getting serious about drafting our fantasy football teams and uh you know thinking about what we're going to do in best ball we are continuing our little series here on buy low candidates george beginning with a guy i absolutely love dj shark he is moving from the jacksonville jaguars to the detroit lions uh shark had a 1000 yard season his second year in jacksonville 118 targets 1008 yards eight touchdowns he played only four games last season uh got injured in that fourth game he led the team in targets in week one 12 targets against houston three receptions, 86 yards and a touchdown, uh, caught a touchdown against Arizona as well, and then immediately got injured on the first play against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, transitions now to Detroit. And, uh, you know, with the with the news that Jamison Williams is likely not going to be ready until maybe December, I mean, it, it, it seems like they, and I think smartly, are going to take it pretty conservatively with his return from the ACL injury. I don't really see any way uh, that Shark gets pushed for playing time, and he is going quite cheap in drafts right now, right about the wide receiver 65. That is a 14th round or so pick. I'm really into DJ Shark this season, George. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, lock, stock, and barrel here. I kind of like this guy better than most as well. Uh, 14th round, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm really surprised he lasts that long here. Uh, what are we worried about? Uh, oh, he's on Detroit? Well, he's on Jacksonville. All right. I mean, I still put up decent numbers there when healthy. I'm not worried about it. I'm on St. Brown. You mentioned Jameson Williams. Well, we'll see when he plays. You know, and listen, I hope that sooner than later as a football fan, I do want to see him play. But if it's uh, December, it's December. If it's next year, it's next year. You know, it's going to be a red shirt year for him or whatever it will be. I think there'll be a, a better passing game than we expect them to play with golf. We know they can run the ball with DeAndre Swift. And I got to assume defense is going to be saying, hey, we're taking Swift out. You know, play the eighth man in the box should open up things in the passing game for St. Brown, for Chark, uh, for Hawkinson as well. That uh, as well as I'm, uh, I like him as uh, also this season. So yeah, Davis, I'm with you on Chark. I'll take him in the 14th round of every league if he lasts that long. I do wonder if this is a guy that people are going to realize as we go along here. Once again, when July 20th drafts pick up in a couple of weeks is where he, he starts to climb a little bit. I'm not talking around round four, round five, but eventually where he's in the round nine, round 10 range. Uh, to me, that just makes more sense here. But I'm all in on Chark in round 14. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think he's just kind of your prototypical great pick in that range. Starting wide receiver. Uh, a lot, you know, the market is anticipating the Lions being better than they were last season. They add, you know, some talented guys. We, we think Amon Ross St. Brown is pretty good. Swift and Hawkinson, if they're somehow able to stay healthy for 16 games. Like, I think they, their offense is going to be, uh, you know, not great, but I think it'll be closer to league average than it's been over the last couple of years. So I'm pretty excited about Shark. And honestly, uh, late round quarterback type stuff in best ball, don't hate Jared Goff either. Moving on now to Terry McLaurin of the Washington Commanders. Uh, he did just receive his big contract extension. And sort of the, the interesting thing with McLaurin is he has always been very good for the circumstances in which he has played. 919 yards and seven touchdowns as a rookie, 1,100 yards, four touchdowns as a second-year player, 1,000 yards, five touchdowns last year with their awful quarterback situation. But... I don't really think a ton has changed in terms of quarterbacking situation. And the, the hard part I find dealing with McLaurin is I just don't think he's got that insane top 10. Like, I don't think there's any chance he is going in the second round of why, you know, of fantasy football drafts next season, not because he's not good, but just because I don't expect the commander's offense to support a player of that caliber. Where are you at on McLaurin? Yeah, once again, you and I are in agreement here. I don't see him being that upper echelon guy. I think he's a very good wide receiver, and maybe on a different uh, team, a different offense, he'd be a uh, you know that guy, that guy. You know, but I don't see him being there with the uh, the best of the best. I don't. I think you look at his numbers, and you were going over it. Year one was nine nineteen. Year two was eleven hundred, and year three was a thousand. Uh, he's seven four five touchdowns. So he's averaging five plus touchdowns a year. Do I think he could beat that? 
Sure. That they can get to seven, eight, nine, maybe? Yeah, but I don't see double digits coming. Now that's one of those fluke years where he just happens to be the guy catching the touchdowns here. So I don't see that. I think they're still going to rely more on their defense here. Uh, their quarterback. Okay, arguably, he's the best that McLaurin's got had, right? And I'll certainly say he's better than Heineke Carson once. Don't know if I'm going to go much further is he than that. that. Is, is he that much better than Taylor I'm Heineke? I'm not certain he he's is. He's got a better arm. He's got a better arm. Heineke didn't have the arm. All right, this, this is a change-up pitcher uh, throwing in there. He, uh, Wentz does have a fastball. Doesn't always know where it's going, but he has a fastball. So I think that'll help things with McLaurin here. But the bottom line is this. I think your upside, upside, he hits everything, 90, 90, low 90s in catch, assuming he stays healthy, plays 17, about 12, 50, eight, nine touchdowns. That's his upside. You know, the more realistic is probably what he had in 2020. The uh, low to mid 80s in, uh, in catches, five to eight touchdowns there. It's a solid season, but not, you know, not second round worthy. Uh, he's a guy that I don't mind having on my team at all, but I'm not spending a second round pick. I'm not spending a top 25 pick on him. So if someone's taking him there, he's yours. I'm not going to have him. Third round, fourth round, that's fine with me. I do not want him. This is really what it comes down to me. I do not want him to be my wide receiver one. Yeah, I, I don't want him to be – I just I just can't really take him, to be honest. I, I like both of the Denver guys more than him. I like Judy. I like Sutton more than him. Um, and, you know, he's kind of in a range where it's lots of guys with questionable quarterback play, you know, Deontay Johnson, DK Metcalf, guys like that. And to, I, I just have never really been a McLaurin guy. It just doesn't really fit the way I play the game. I'm, I'm willing to be wrong about that. If he does end up posting a 1,400-yard, 10-touchdown season, then I will have to wear that. But I will. Uh, I don't. I don't think I will be buying on the Commanders' offense in general. Moving finally now to Justin Fields, a guy I was really optimistic about last season. Uh, he did not play well. Uh, he started ten games, completed fifty-eight percent of his passes, seven touchdowns, ten interceptions. He was pretty successful as a rusher. Seventy-two rushes, five point eight yards per carry, two rushing touchdowns. Had a couple moments as a passer, in particular. Uh, this, uh, you know, rolling out to his left back foot pass uh, across his body to a, to the tight end in the corner of the end zone. But the Bears are just going to be horrible. They spent no money in free agency. Allen Robinson is now a member of the Rams. They, they drafted a 25-year-old wide receiver in the third round of the draft. They signed Byron Pringle from the Kansas City Chiefs. But they just are going to be awful. Let's just be, they, they are going to be maybe the worst team in the NFC. They are going to stink. The only way Fields ends up being a good pick this year is if they just say, you know what, Justin, we're going to be bad. Run as much as you want. If you want to run for 800 yards and five touchdowns, do that. I'm still taking Fields a little bit, but I think it's going to be pretty ugly in terms of passing this season. I mean, you can't take Fields in a traditional league, all right? A one quarterback league. You can't. I mean, come on. Yeah, 12, I'm going to assume most leagues are 12 team leagues. Uh, he's not even in my top 20. I mean, it's just not. Uh, it's not all him. You know, I think, once again, what you said is correct. They didn't really give him much to deal with. I like David Montgomery, a solid running back, but you don't have a wide receiver one. I'm not so sure you have a wide receiver two on your team. Uh, Mooney's a nice guy. Pringle, Ellis Jones, I think just trade for Nikhil Harry. you got a lot of uh, mud you're going to throw against the wall and hope something sticks. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, Cole Komet, okay, maybe a decent tight end, but he's not top ten. So there's not a lot here. This is a major work in progress. About the only plus I'll give Chicago is that you got a new coaching staff. All right, certainly can't be worse than the old one. So that should help there. Yes, he's a running quarterback, which should also help there. Uh, Superflex, which is my preferred league. I think more, more leagues should be a uh, Superflex for a variety of reasons here, including more strategy here. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's usable in that, but still you're talking the 18 to 24 range. You know, I don't think there's a lot of upside here. How many touchdowns are you going to throw to you this year? Throw this season, 18, 22 at most? You're going to need that rushing yards to be off the charts to really, really be usable week in and week out. He's a quarterback three to me in a perfect, in a perfect world. Yeah, I think, you, I think you're right. You know, uh, the Scott Fishbowl just wrapped up. He was a later round pick in that. But I, I am optimistic. I just hope that uh, – He's able to get it done in Chicago. Guys, we're going to go ahead and run into break here real quick on FST. Here in just a few moments, I will be joined by Dubs Anderson to talk about the world of golf in the 3M Open. See you back in a few seconds.
Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast CBG, to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game Packers. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. Do you think a Big 12 Pac 12 merger? would have made sense no i don't i don't because when you add more teams in kevin you're going to divvy up more pieces of the pie it's the reason why you see these big guys leaving and we're looking right now at these pac-12 teams kevin and saying to ourselves what are you actually bringing to the table to the big 12 apparently not enough only on sports grid fantasy sports today the Baltimore Orioles take uh, Jackson Holiday, who is a shortstop. And according to Keith Law from The Athletic, he was basically one of the guys who did the, uh, you know, improved his draft stock the most over the last 12 months. He uh, essentially, he got into the gym, reworked his body so that uh, he kind of went from more of a, a contact, even swing plane type pitch to, or a hitter to uh, like a power hitter. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. A Yerfee or a Nerfee, Kev? Well, the Nerfee is the favored side tonight at minus 136 to stay under that half run total in the opening frame. Do you agree that maybe we won't see a run early on? I agree that it should be the favorite. I think if you made me bet it, though, I actually might be inclined to yep. touch the yes. I, I, yep. I do. I look at the National League lineup, and it's all righties. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. He is finished. He'll come back next year. It'll happen again, and he'll never pitch again. That'll be the end of it. I, I think that Strasburg had his, he had his moment in that World Series when the Nationals won it. He gave it all out, that, and he, he had injury problems before that. And now he just hasn't been able to stay on the field since. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I think that he is finished. The Sports Grid Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I'm Davis Maddock, joined as always on Wednesdays by my buddy Dubs Anderson. We are returning to you. On the heels of uh, one of the most depressing rounds of golf I have ever watched Sunday at the Open Championship, don't don't really know what else Rory could have done. Ties ties the uh, the lowest score ever in a major championship before the start of the week at 18 under par. Hit it into one bunker all week. Made eagle from that bunker. Bogey free round on Sunday has a pair of 60. I mean, he just he did not step a foot wrong and gets chased down by Cameron Smith and Cameron Young. I guess that'll kind of get lost to history that Cameron Young actually finished second because he made an eagle on uh, on 18. But that that felt worse than any Rory loss that I can remember. That that sucked. Yeah, I, I mean, Davis, I mean, I'm Australian. I had tickets on Cameron Smith. We gave him out last Wednesday. But for some reason, I was rooting for Roy McIlroy because it just felt right. It was such a special week. We needed a special winner. And Roy McIlroy, I mean, if you asked him at the start of the week, we're going to give you 18 under par, done. Sign me done. up. That's going to win the Open Championship. So, I mean, for Cameron Smith, you know, I, I thought he sort of cost himself the tournament with not doing much on the Saturday. But eight under par in that final round. And again, he proved to us when he is on with that putter, he is, you know, the best in the world. In, in terms of short game, on that kind of golf course where the driver wasn't so key for a guy like Cameron Smith, uh, great to see him finally get the breakthrough major win. And now... There's rumors already circulating. How long is he going to be sticking around on the PGA Tour? But again, for Roy McIlroy, I think it's been a fantastic year. 
We look at, you know, he hasn't won a major since 2014. I don't care. I, I think the vintage Roy McIlroy is now back, and that's what we like. So ma majors are coming for Roy. No two ways about it. Yep. Uh, so we are in uh, the, the northern part of the United States this week with the 3M Open. This was uh, one of the locations of one of my, my worst golf beats ever when Matthew <laughs> Wolf hold that putt from, uh, from 30 feet off the green to beat Bryson DeChambeau after Bryson makes birdie, hitting it over the lake on 18. It's a pretty cool golf course, I, in my opinion. Uh, scores are going to be very, very low here, uh, and we are, we are definitely seeing the live effect and i mean to be honest also the open championship effect not not that many guys want to fly back over and play this event but the combo of the live and the major championship last week leaves us with a field where uh you know we have hideki matsuyama and tony finau trading as the favorites getting into some of the guys i like this week in dfs sahith the gala it just like this guy's been at the top of so many leaderboards we got it we just got to get him a win he should be a yeah. good fit for the course. You know, he's not going to have to get too tricky with his wedges. Just hit the ball far, hit it straight, make your eight-foot putts. You should be feeling good. Troy Merritt and Tom Hoagie, my uh, my cheaper guys here. Hoagie, I actually don't think is a very good course fit because he's a tricky wedge guy. But 7,100 here just felt a little bit too short for him. Also, 80-1 to 1 in the betting markets. And um, look, if, if Finau is going to be getting these wins on the PGA Tour, I definitely think he is a weak field assassin. Do not do not imagine, you know, when, we, when, we're, when we're at Pebble Beach, when we're at, uh, you know, uh, when we're at, uh, you know, Arnold Palmer, when we're at the majors, I am not a Finau guy. But these weak field events, I feel very comfortable riding with Tony Finau. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love those plays. What do we know about the golf course? It's a longer track pass winners. They've really had that distance off the tee. Uh, Matty Wolf, Cameron Champ got it done here last year. There's plenty of water. Lurking. I like Tony Fina. He's played here three times before. He's had three good finishes, two good finishes, including a good run there last week at the Open Championship. He fits the mold of being a great driver of the golf ball. And look, for Tony Fina, he got that second win on the PGA Tour. It was about a year ago. Maybe he got a little complacent there. But again, a weaker field is certainly going to give, uh, you know, big hit and Tony Fina plenty of confidence. I mean, what about Marty Fish, the tennis player? He's even in the field this week, Davis. I can't believe in terms of field strength. It's not a strong one. I'll throw a few other names out there. Davis Riley, a guy who's getting very close, like a Cameron Young. He wants that breakthrough win. You can get him at 9K. I think that's a decent number. The big hitting Aussie, Cameron Davis, 8,900. I think that's a good play. Again, good driver of the golf ball, longer golf course. I think that suits him because greens and reg will stay high when you've got some larger green services. I like Troy Merritt. I've also got him on the card. If you're looking for a bit more value, don't sleep on a guy like Bo Hosler. Super sneaky, a bit of a journeyman for, you know, considering he's 27 years of age. You can get him at 7,200. And another big hitting bomber who, Davis, I know you've brought up in the past, Brandon Matthews coming up from the yep. corn free two way. He's going to get his card pretty soon here at 6,900. I think it's a pretty good value play. A couple of, uh, you know, breakfast balls to throw in the lineups this week. Go for a couple of elites, but uh, I certainly think there could be a value play, a value winner coming in, uh, coming into Minneapolis for this one on Sunday. For sure. All right. Some of the guys I am not playing this week on DraftKings, uh, just pretty much you're, you're the, like, these events for me, it's all about the young guys, right? So, so when I start yeah. to see some of the older guys, the tour grinders get popular in DFS, Ryan Palmer, Brandon Steele, Cameron Tringali, those are all guys with ownership projections above 10%. Just not interested, right? I, I, want, I want the Brandon Matthews. I want these guys coming up from the Corn Ferry. I, I, want, I want the guys who uh, you know, need, need the paycheck, need, the, need the, the sponsor's exemption, need the tour card, all of that stuff. And then, you know, Sungjae just continues to be priced so expensive at these events, and he deserves it based on his tee to green game. But his putting is even worse than normal right now. I mean, he is outside the top 150 on tour in strokes gained putting. He is, it, it's, I mean, he has gone like full Byung Hun An with, uh, with his putting <laughs> right now. It is, it is really, Maybe it on. is really tough. Yeah, it is yeah. really tough right now for him. I think the funniest thing I, I've seen this season, uh, Davis, was Ben Arn. He, he finally got the win on the uh, the Corn Ferry Tour. He's gone, you know, times have been really tough. Or I've been really struggling. And then in the same interview, he's taken off in his Lamborghini four-wheel drive. So times are tough out there for these uh, professional golfers. I agree. Sung Jae In, once he got, uh, you know, COVID back in South Korea, once he returned out here to the States, he hasn't been the play that we saw earlier this season where he's, you know, golf game was really well-rounded. So I don't think he's a play for us this week. And I'll throw in, Hideki Matsuyama. Um, I think there's a lot of distractions off the golf course for Hideki. I just don't like him for this one, given 
uh, the number they've got him at there. But again, I think, you know, good drives of the golf ball. Cameron Tringali, I mean, this guy just doesn't want to win. What's he made? $20 million in career earnings without getting a breakthrough on a Sunday afternoon. So I totally agree with that play. Um, yeah, I, I, I like your, your calls this week, Davis. I think good drive of the golf ball, get a little value. Um, some of these big names, I don't think the motivation is going to be there. Three more events until the FedEx Cup playoffs. You want to be up for this one. Yeah, absolutely. The FedEx Cup and, and big year for the FedEx Cup playoffs, right? I wonder if maybe there's going to be an announcement coming here soon where the PGA Tour juices up the prize pool where they're like, actually, it's, uh, you know, $5 million for second place too. And everyone who makes it through the first leg gets 500000 Like, because, you know, they're, and definitely you and I are going to keep talking about this throughout the course of the season, you know, uh, as, as the Live Golf, uh, they, they play, uh, they start on Friday. Uh, and, and Charles Howell the third is apparently the name that is going to be joining that field. There are rumors that Cameron Smith, after winning the Open yeah. Championship, is going to be joining the Live. Uh, don't, don't love that. Have a couple bets here across the pond. They are playing a championship on the Ladies European Tour. They are playing the Evian Championship extremely good golf course if, if you just like to watch golf to see like some of the best courses in the world evian championship got it's you know in the in these mountain ranges in france it's uh it's incredible and then uh callum shankwin over at the uh, the kazoo classic which is maybe the funniest name for a golf tournament that i've ever heard i uh i i, I absolutely love that play and for the evian championship this gal lynn grant i don't know i don't know how much you grind the um the ladies tour but this gal lynn grant one, she's the she's the leading money winner on the ladies European tour right now, having a great season. Maybe the best swing I have ever seen. Like when I swing a golf club, I'm like, I want to swing it like this gal because it is so smooth, so buttery. I I, don't, I have no idea how she has engineered it, but Lynn Grant, 33 to one at the Evian Championship. That is my my gold star play of the week. I love that, mate. I'll throw a couple of value plays in there. Uh, Minji Lee, the Aussie defending champion. Uh, it's a little chalky, plus 850, so I'm going to stay away from that. I like Brooke Henderson, the Canadian. Absolutely bombs it. Love her golf game, 22 to 1. And then I'll throw in Hannah Green at 31 to 1. Built for the big stage, former major winner. But, mate, don't sleep uh, on the LPGA Tour, the Evian. Great golf course, great betting. And I think we've got a much smaller sample size of who can actually win these events, right? The PGA Tour, week in, week out, anyone can make a run. Maybe not Marty Fish this week, but on the ladies' side of the draw, 30 names who can realistically uh, win an event the week of. So love those plays. And what about the kazoo? The kazoo. What a name for that one. I'd love to go to it. Yeah, and uh, you know we're we're right in the thick of the transfer window right now too for uh, for European soccer. The season is going to start on August fifth. Uh, let's see here. What's, what's good. Okay. Cristiano Ronaldo, where is he at? August 5th. Is he at Manchester United? Does he leave? Does he go to the MLS? What, what's happening with old Ronnie? He's staying. No one else wants him. He didn't want to go to Saudi Arabia for 200 million. He doesn't want to come here stateside. He'll be there at Old Trafford right next to Ericsson. They're not going to be much better, but Hey, he'll be there. Well, I, you know, it's, I, I definitely don't want Manchester United to win the league, but I, I missed out. I have no memories of the glory days of Manchester United. By the time I started following professional soccer, uh, you know, I had already, I missed Sir Alex Ferguson, right? I even missed, I even missed David Moyes, right? I didn't get, I didn't get any of that stuff. So for, for the entire time I have been following the sport, Manchester United have been, a laughing stock, and and of course, you know all the television presenters and the podcasters, all of them grew up Manchester United fans or fans of other teams, and absolutely hating Manchester United because it just felt like they won everything all the time. They just, you know, they it, there was nothing you could uh, you could do about it. So I I hope that Christian Eriksen plays well. I hope that we get to see more of Anthony Martial and Jaden Sancho and Anthony Alanga this season. Uh, maybe maybe next week with another not so great golf event. Maybe we will do a, a transfer. Uh, recap special for the folks here on Fantasy Sports Today. So let's be let's be thinking about that one. Guys, we are going to go ahead and run into break here real quick on Fantasy Sports Today. Of course, thank you to Dubs for joining us to talk about the 3M Open, the Kazoo Classic, and the Evian Championship. George is going to rejoin me here in just a few moments for Fantasy Reality. Don't go anywhere. Stay on the grid. See you back in a few seconds. If you want to 
pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The early line. Is it almost too on the nose that Kyrie Irving was supposed to show up to the Drew League? and left everybody leaving themselves, questioning where Kyrie was. Because you're right. Can you imagine? Even though it's a Drew League, we're not even talking about all NBA players. But if they're in the same backcourt here, you know, how he gets, what, a seven, eight, nine assists there in the first half. You know, they're really going up and down the court. Two on one fast breaks. Alley-oops here to LeBron James. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. So today we hit the streets of Manhattan to test New Yorkers' baseball knowledge and to see how many all-stars we have. Don Mattingly. Was a former player for the Yankees, now a head coach of? I don't know, man. I know nothing about sports. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers plays football, but relatively close. Jeter. Derek Jeter. Uh, Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge? Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge it is. We're in New York. They love the Yankees. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game practice. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game, oh, live, win. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. I was with a heavy today, right? And I told him that USC was getting the bulk of the action on winning a national championship as they stole that coach from Norman, Oklahoma, that he's going to come to Los Angeles and win a national championship in his first year with that crappy football team. Has anyone not noticed how crappy they've been the last 10 years? The Sports Grid Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I am Davis Maddock, joined by George Kurtz. A reminder before we get into fantasy reality to please be following at Sports Grid and at Sports Grid TV on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram. You are going to get all the best news, notes, injury updates, injury news, highlights, our, our favorite bets, our favorite picks. You're going to get content from our show fantasy sports today you're also going to get pharrell coast to coast the morning after in game live all of the amazing stuff that we have going on here at the network and you don't want to be missing out so make sure that you are following at sports grid and at sports grid tv before we get to fantasy reality george were you uh were you there watching the all-star game were you watching shohei otani get picked off giancarlo stanton hitting the home run i i gotta i gotta come clean below my line did not did not make it to, to turn on the mlb all-star game well, yes, I was wa- watching maybe a strong word. It was on. It was on, but I was doing other things. You know, I look up every now and then. If, you know, maybe I'm on the laptop reading, doing a little research. Also on in-game live uh, for the middle innings of it, so uh, couldn't really pay attention to the whole game here. I did see Jim Carl. I, I saw the home runs. I just had to be looking up each time the guy hit a home run, Stanton, Buxton, and Goldsmith, so I saw those. But the later innings, eh, you know, I, I admit that. I didn't watch much of like six through eight. You know, like I said, other things going on here. But it was on the whole time. I think I should give credit for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, look, it's a, it's a, it's a fine, it's a fine 
product or whatever. And, and uh, it is, it does come at a nice time on the schedule. I wish that I, I mean, just my big wish in life is that MLB did marketing in a better way, right? Like, uh, you know, there, there, there's like this whole genre of tweets of people who see Mike Trout out in public and he's just living a normal life, right? Mike Trout, the best baseball player of my lifetime in all reality, right? Uh, 2020's answer to Mickey Mantle. And the guy can just go get groceries, get a coffee, go to the bar, whatever. And, you know, one in 10 people will recognize him. So I don't know if there's ever a way back for that, but uh, maybe that'll be a fantasy reality in the future. Let's go ahead and play our game, fantasy or reality. All right, well, rookies are reporting to training camp. The Atlanta Falcons had their rookies report yesterday. So, of course, we got some headlines about Desmond Ritter. The Las Vegas Raiders, by the way, today becoming the first team to have rookies and veterans all report. Everyone showing up to training camp for the Raiders today. But pretty simple, Desmond Ritter, a third-round draft pick for the Atlanta Falcons. The team gave Marcus Mariota a two-year, $12 million full of uh, contract full of incentives. But uh, simple question, Desmond Ritter, fantasy or reality, will start a game for the Atlanta Falcons this year, George? Yeah, sort of the, could be this year's Davis Mills, right, uh, we're going for here. Uh, I mean, listen, I'm as curious as anybody else to see what Mariota can do, all right, uh, starting again for a team. But even when he was a starter, he never played a full season, not once, not once. You know, 12 games as rookie, 15, 15, 14, before he became a backup. All right, so, yeah, yeah, Desert Ritter's going to play. This is definitely reality. My only question is how many games. How many games is he going to play? One, because, like I said, I don't think Marietta will stay healthy. Two, Atlanta's going to be a bad team, all right? They're going to be a bad team. You mentioned Chicago might be the worst team in the NFC. Atlanta's going to give them a run for their money here. Uh, this is not – I don't think this is any – breaking news here. I think people know this. Uh, so they're going to they're gonna want to see what they have in Ritter eventually anyway for a couple of games here. You know, once, even if they're – even if uh, Mariota somehow does stay healthy, I got to think the last quarter of the season, last four or five games, that's Ritter's. You know, let's find out what we have here. It could also be a way of shoring up a top three pick, top five pick, and you go from there. So to me, this is uh, absolute reality here. Desmond Ritter will play at least one game. I think he plays more than one. If I had to put an uh, over-under on it, I'd probably go at least two and a half, if not three and a half. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna set the line even higher than that. I have reality here for the reasons that you mentioned. One, Marcus Mariota loves to get hurt. Two, the Falcons are gonna stink, so they should get some live action film of Desmond Ritter. You know, other than just watching him in practice. Now, I, I, I think there's a very slight chance. You know, three, five percent. He plays great in the preseason and in training camp and ends up starting week one. I don't think that's very likely, but I definitely think it's in the realm of possibilities because I mean, just like everyone in the NFL knows who Marcus Mariota is. It's not, it's not as if this guy is going to become a top 10 or 15 quarterback in the NFL. He's fine. You know, he he's a good backup quarterback to have uh, kind of surprised, I guess that, you know, another team uh, like he would make sense as like a backup quarterback for like the Ravens, maybe, you know, that would like a kind of a, a mobile type backup, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, total reality here. Desmond Ritter is going to start. I, I would take the over on two or three. I think he starts like five or six games and I'm pretty interested to see how he plays because he did not run as much as you would think in college for a quarterback who ran a four five forty. So I wonder if they design more of that stuff into the offense, given their total lack of playmakers. So definite reality on Desmond Ritter starting at least one game for the Atlanta Falcons this season. Moving on now to college football, Vanderbilt head coach Clark Leah said, we know in time Vanderbilt football will be the best program in the country. Uh, and he basically says they're, they're going to win the SEC. They're going to do it the long and the hard way. I have my, I have my doubts about this, but fantasy or reality, Clark Lee We'll get to Coach Vanderbilt in an SEC championship game, George. Fantasy or reality? They don't need to win. They just have to play in it. So they don't have to win the SEC championship. They just have to be in the SEC championship. All right. So uh, some quick research here. They were 2-10 and 10 last season. All right. Yes. The eighth straight season they've been below 500. Uh, how long is this guy going to coach for? All right, it ain't going to be anytime soon, all right? Uh, 
I mean, listen, I, it's, I'm all for, you know, a optimism and rah, rah, and, you know, the, you know, all the hype that comes along with everything. And you got to get the other uh, fans interested in here. But this is just blowing smoke, right? I mean, I, I can't see this. You know, it's going to be hard to recruit top players. You're playing in the uh, SEC, which is a tough uh, conference. All the other great teams there, they're going to have better. No, no, uh, this is fantasy. I, said, I have no problem with him, like I said, blowing the smoke, getting the hype up there. Ah, rah, rah, rah. We're going to be great. We're going to kill everybody. And then reality sets in. All right. I just yeah. don't. I think, once again, should you even be saying this, by the way? Should the, re, should the reality be, we're going to get the 500? Yeah, we're going to be a 500 team. We're going to win more than we lose. How about that? All right, how about we go that first before we say we're going to start getting to the uh, championship game here? Uh, so, no, to me, this is fantasy. Not not going to happen. Not in the near future, anyway. Yeah, I mean, total fantasy. So, I mean, it's, it is just absurd how competitive and how good the SEC is. I mean, so so obviously you have Georgia and Alabama. And Georgia and Alabama play in the opposing divisions, the East and the West division. So that's going to make it even harder. You know, if Georgia and Alabama were cannibalizing each other, it would make it easier for Vanderbilt to accomplish this. But even beyond that, Florida, historically a great college football team. Arkansas, really good college football team. Auburn, really good. Mississippi State, I, I mean, you can take it or leave it, but they, they have been decent the last couple seasons. They're really good on offense. And I, I would actually say Vanderbilt is probably the second worst historical team in the SEC. The only other team that is worse than them is Mizzou, who will obviously also never win the SEC. Uh, so I think this is such a long road for them to hoe. Uh, I, I'm going to say total fantasy here. He will never be able to accomplish this. I don't have any problem with it, right? You know, And, and, and also another weird thing about this is that uh, this is his first head coaching job. He was a grad assistant at UCLA, a linebackers coach at South Dakota State, UCLA, Bowling Green, Syracuse, Notre Dame, and Wake Forest. So I don't even know how he got this job. I mean, maybe he, uh, may, I guess maybe he played football at Vanderbilt or something like that. I, I can't even, I can't even get uh, a sense of that. So I got, I got total fantasy here. Uh, our final topic for today, we got Jimmy Fallon back in the news again, Jimmy Fallon made headlines a couple months ago because he was one of the he was one of the first big celebrities to buy uh, the Bored Ape NFTs. He, and he brought uh, Paris Hilton on and they were talking about their apes. But Jimmy Fallon, you know, he's a man about town. He likes to he likes to be he likes to be with the kids. You know, he's basically the gif of Steve Buscemi saying, how do you do fellow kids? And he is coming out with a skateboarding shoe that will be released via the sneakers app. Uh, George, I have a sense of what your answer is going to be, but fantasy or reality, you will try to buy Jimmy Fallon's skateboarding shoe. Are you kidding me? That looks like I was painting in my garage and one of my kids knocked over all the paint and got all of my shoes. There's no way in hell I'm buying that. All right. Listen, I'm of the age now. Uh, I wear the same sneaker. Uh, even when I, I go out and buy the same sneaker over and over again. I just want to be comfortable. I want, I want to like what I like, and I get the Nike Monarchs. I might get a different color. You know, they might come in black. They might come in white or the blue or the red uh, tint there. But that's it. I mean, I don't care about anything else. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care, blah, blah, blah. But even if I was young, I am not buying that. All right? I don't know what that is, but uh, that is definitely not for me, and I'm not wearing that. I know people are sneaker people, and they'll go crazy over this thing, and I'm an idiot, whatever. But uh, no, obviously that's fantasy. This stuff. I can just imagine walking around with that. I would get crushed. Uh, no, no, I am not. Uh, I would not buy that. I, and how much is this going to cost? One twenty-five, one fifty a pair? No, no, no. I'll stick with my uh, with my monarchs and be very happy, and leave my paint sneakers to somebody else. Yeah, uh, I will not be buying these either. I assume that uh, that Brett snuck these in for me. He knows I uh, he knows I have been a skateboarder for a long time, and I like a good pair of skateboarding shoes. But I I uh, I tend to go for the more classic, understated. I just like a, a flat white or flat black skateboarding shoe. I don't need uh, I, I don't need and don't like all the bells and whistles. I'm also like I like shoes. I like to get you know a new pair of Vans or some new dress shoes or whatever. But I'm not like a sneakers guy. I think there's I think there's a big difference between liking buying you know new clothes, new shoes, or whatever, and being like a sneakers guy. Because a lot of that is like you know the Air the Air Jordans, which never never worked for me, right? The Air Jordans were just always kind of too big for me. I'm a I'm a littler dude, so they always kind of just look like big moon boots on my feet. Never never a fan of those. But yeah, this is 
a fantasy for me. I will not be. Uh, I will not be downloading the uh, the sneakers app to try and get these shoes. In fact, the um the last time I I bet you've never done this, George. Uh, you, we can do that fantasy reality. But the last time I downloaded an app was TaylorMade, the uh, the golfing company did an apparel line with this kind of boutique type store called Kith. This was about a month ago, and they uh, they did a, they did a line of kind of like crossover streetwear golf clothes that you had to download the specific app to try and get. And by the time I downloaded it and tried to get on, all of this stuff was sold out. But that's a good one. A bonus fantasy reality. Fantasy reality, you have downloaded a specific app to try and get an item of clothing that had a specific release date. Fantasy or reality, George? Yeah, that would be a uh, fantasy, big time fantasy. You're lucky I can dress myself when I saw an app. Actually, I probably do need an app to tell me what to wear. All right, uh, a college shirt for shows. I know that. Other than that, it's t- pretty much t shirt, shorts, uh, jeans, whatever I want to wear, sweats, you know, around the house. Whatever. It depends on what I'm doing in here. But uh, I mean, to me, dressing up is pretty much this and a pair of jeans. All right. You think, I, I would probably do need an app to tell me what to wear. My wife, when I'm, when I'm going out, my wife will pick up the clothes. No, you have to wear this. I'm not going to look like a fool around you, which I get it. Uh, fashion sense, I have zero and I don't care. You know, I think that's uh, that's the right that's the right way to live, right? Wear what you like to like, and uh, if you got to fit in somewhere, have your have your partner dress you. I'm dealing with that right now, getting all my wedding clothes ready. I'll be I'll be doing that in under a month now. Time flies, guys. We're gonna go ahead and run into a break here, real quick on fantasy sports today. When we return, George and I will be doing the Sports Grid 60. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back here with you in just a few moments. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. When you watch J-Rod's opening round, you go, oh, yeah, everyone's going to get their bonus time, and it's really going to be a four-minute first round. Julio Rodriguez kind of teased a little bit there. He made it look so easy. It was not that easy for almost everybody else that followed. Nobody had as big of a round one as Julio Rodriguez did. Only on SportsGrid. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team I keep coming back to is the Mets. And I come back to the Mets because they are all in right now. They have two starting pitchers, one of which is the best pitcher in baseball when he's on the mound coming back, and Jacob DeGrom, who might opt out of his contract. The other is Max Scherzer, who's an older pitcher. They are in right now for this season. Juan Soto, you can back up the truck with the prospects the Mets have, whether it's Alvarez, Beatty, um, Mauricio. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Hara, your daily numbers game in Inverness, Scotland, taking stock in the ratings of the international events that have just been held and what will be held. Wimbledon are averaging 1.4 to 1.6 in America with two non-Americans, Kyrgios and Djokovic, competitive match, but heading in the right direction as far as ratings are concerned. And then there's the Open. Tiger Woods headlines the first Day 1.2 to 2.4 watching on ESPN and it's uh, streaming really significant numbers and very important and the Friday Saturday Sunday numbers off the charts economic impact here heat wave and economics off the charts as well bottom line is uh, also 
heading to the U.S., not the U.S., the British Senior Open, which is over in Glen Eagles. That'll add icing to the cake. Very good for the U.K. Hello, everyone, and welcome back into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I'm Davis Maddock, joined by George Kurtz. And as always, we are going to close our show out with a little something we like to call the Sports Grid 60. All right, so as we've been talking about, last night was the All Star game. Not much going on today in uh, sports, more or less baseball here. But what I wanted to, uh, I guess, complain about would be uh, Rob Manfred. You know, had his little, uh, you want to call it State of the Union of Baseball, whatever it is. Someone needs to get this guy a publicist, a speechwriter, something. Everything he says is just moronic. I mean, completely moronic. The All Star uniforms last night were gross. All right, one team's got what a dark brownish black thing, and the other one's got a white with gold. I mean, it looked like the San Diego Padres were playing an intra squad game. That's what it reminded me of. Not an all star game. Why couldn't the teams wear their uniforms? That's what we all want to see, right? Yeah, uh, I, I love baseball, watch a million games, but even I had to think, who's that coming at the plate right now? Oh, okay, it's him because they're not wearing their uniforms. It was harder to tell what they're wearing. Manfred, after the game, says, Oh, well, well uh, it's not a good look for baseball to have all different uniforms. Really? Really? I mean, come on. And then he uh, is talking, someone asked about the minor leaguers. Well, you guys, what do you mean they don't have a living wage? Of course they have a living wage. What? $400 a week you can live on that, Rob? You, know, you might want to get into reality here, buddy. But someone, I mean, he called the, the, the trophy a piece of tin at one time. Rob Manfred, man, you better get a publicist. When is the last time Rob Manfred said something and it was a good thing to say? I cannot, I never remember hearing that guy say one thing and being like, oh, that was a good, smart, observational point. Uh, base, baseball needs to work on that. So my, my sports grid 60 is there should be an event today, right? Golf should do an event. Tennis should have some final, you know, some exhibition match. Imagine if they did the match seven today, right? And it was, if you know, Mahomes and Allen and Brady and Rogers and Phil or whoever were playing today, amazing ratings would absolutely crush, would lead sports center, all of that stuff. Huge missed opportunity by the market there. I hope we get there. We're going to close today's show. Thank you to George. Thank you to Brett. Thank you to everyone over at LTN. Everyone stay on the grid. We'll see you back tomorrow. Great, great.